Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to another screencast by your earth science teacher, Mr. Stano. And today we're going to look a little bit more into our solar system and really how it works and why the planets move the way they do. Uh, the first thing we're going to take a look at is Earth's rotation. We know that Earth rotates on its axis about every uh, once every 24 hours or 15 degrees per hour at a rate of about 1,000 miles per hour. So it's pretty easy. So if we have our axis, uh, a little hard to tell on here. It looks like it might be somewhere like this, moving down. It's going to rotate or move about that axis. So we do. To get this 15 degrees per hour, it's relatively simple. We do 360 degrees, because that's how many degrees are in a circle, divided by 24 hours, and we should get 15 degrees per hour. So that's the Earth's rate of rotation. Now, how do we know that this is even occurring? So we do have some evidence for Earth's rotation, um, even without satellite images and all that stuff. So the first thing we can take a look at is Coriolis effect. What we notice is that winds and larger bodies of waters uh, will often deflect or curve to the right in the northern hemisphere. In the southern hemisphere, we see them curving to the left. And if we take a look on this image right here, we have the expected path. So if we shoot a cannonball straight, what will end up happening is we'll get a slight curve to the right in the northern hemisphere. Southern hemisphere, it's a curve to the left from where you're shooting from. So because of this right here, we have so another piece of evidence that Earth actually rotates. If we look at page 14 in our Earth Science reference table, it will also show us this deflection. Notice that all of our planetary winds have this deflection to the right, and the same with here. Anything in the Northern Hemisphere. So basically here, above the line, is to the right, Anything below this line or south of the equator is to the left, which you can see here. So remember, page 14 can help you with this. We also have the full call pendulum. Uh, it's basically just this big pendulum that they swing. And what happens is as it swings, Earth is rotating, you can see that it'll actually appear to change directions, knocking down these dominoes over a period of time. It'll, guess what? Do 360 degrees in 24 hours. So that full call pendulum with that change in direction of it is evidence of Earth's rotation. Okay, moving on, uh, moving outwards and away from the Earth. We have Kepler's laws. There's three of them. Uh, we'll try to move through them as a brief overview. We're going to spend quite a bit of time on these in class. So we have Johannes Kepler uh, in the late uh, 16th century. Uh, early 17th century, uh, astronomer, mathematician, pretty smart guy, I guess, for the most part. He developed three laws of planetary motion. Okay, um, These are some things based off his, off his laws. Earth revolves around the sun once every 365 days, uh, moving at 67,000 miles per hour. The orbit is slightly elliptical, and we'll get more to that very soon. And the Earth is closer to the sun in the winter and farther away in the summer. These are important. Make sure you have them down, uh, especially the last two. So the first law. Planets revolve in elliptical orbits with the sun at one of the focus. Doesn't mean much until we see an image like this. So here's our orbit. So this is our planet. So we can call this Earth or any other one. And it's just revolving around the sun right here. Notice that the sun is at one of the foci, and it'll just revolve around. That's it. That's Kepler's first law. There's not much to it, or is there? So we first off, we need to know what an ellipse is. Um, an ellipse is basically uh, in a geometric shape that has two foci. A circle has one focus. So very simpler, uh, similar ellipses and circles. And the sun, in our case, is at one of the foci for our solar system. And take again this little image right here. I would get all these images down for the Kepler's laws. Okay, these ellipses right here, notice that a circle is an ellipse, but not all ellipses are circles. So we have our one foci right here, and we could draw a path around it. An ellipse, the foci become spread apart. Increasing eccentricity, it goes from zero all the way 
to 1. There are no units for eccentricity. It's a ratio which you'll see from the earth science reference table. Um, is 0 to 1. If you get any number above 1 or below 0, you've done something wrong to calculate this. But notice, a 0 looks like a circle. A 1 flattens out. So here is highly elliptical. This shape right here would have an eccentricity of 1. This is just, once again, looking at the different components. The major axis is basically your diameter. It goes from one side to the other here like that. Your foci are these two points. This image, also very important with the parts. If we go to page one of our earth science reference table, we will see that the formula for eccentricity is the distance between foci over the length of major axis. No units, and a number has to be written out to the thousands place and will be between zero to one. So you will get decimals for this. If we go to page 15, we can see the eccentricity, uh, where we go, right here, of all the celestial objects in our solar system, or most of them, from Mercury all the way to Earth's moon. Notice the sun does not have an eccentricity of orbit. It doesn't orbit itself. Um, and you can see here the lower numbers like Venus, it's a very, uh, very circular orbit. And if we move to even Neptune, very circular, but something like Mercury, highly elliptical orbits right here. How to draw an ellipse? We'll practice this in class. But what you end up seeing is we have two pins. We basically connect them with a string and then follow that string all the way around. We'll practice this in the class. This is actually also on the lab portion or the lab practical part of our earth science regions. Then we have Kepler's second law. Almost done. Uh, planets sweep out in equal areas in equal periods of time. So if we were to calculate the area of this triangle, we'll just give it a number and say it's 100 units. This would also be 100 units. This is because as a planet's far away from the sun, it's moving slow. As it's close, it's moving fast. So what ends up happening is it moves fast here, and it covers this area. But while it's far away, it moves slow, a little bit different of a triangle, and the units end up being the same. Or actually, the areas end up being the same. So once again, so taking a look at it, so you can see it covers this area in 30 days, and it covers here in 30 days. A little bit less ground, but the area of these two shapes are the same. And Kepler's third law. A planet farther from the sun not only has a longer path, which we saw in the last time, um, but it also travels more slowly. This is due to a weaker gravitational pull as we move further away from the center of our solar system, our sun. And that's because of gravity. Remember, gravity is what's keeping us in orbit around the sun. It's a strong attractive force between objects the more massive the objects are, the greater the gravitational force, and also the closer two objects are, the greater the gravitational force between them. So as a planet moves closer to the sun, it's gonna speed up, that gravity's pulling it in. And if we take a look, it's actually winter that we're closest to the sun and we're moving fastest. It takes us to inertia. Remember, we're moving around, we're getting pulled by gravity in towards the sun. So then how could we just don't go in towards it? Well, it's because of inertia. The inertia, basically, we move in a straight line, our path, we're moving, but gravity pulls us and is curving around. So you can see here, the gravitational force is pulling us in, we're moving around, but we really want to go that way. But gravity pulls us, so we want to move that way. It's pulling it in. So it's gravity that pulls us in towards the sun, inertia that's keeping us in that orbit around, or helping us keeping us in that curved orbit. And just taking a look, closer look of it. And that's it. Hope you enjoyed this screencast, ladies and gentlemen. Take care.